Hello, and welcome to my Chromatic Nature YouTube channel. My name is Natalia, and on this YouTube channel, I experiment with natural dyes and then show you guys what happens. Today's video is all about mordants. Mordants are ingredients that help natural fibers bond with natural dyes. If you've been learning about natural dyeing, then I'm sure you've come across a couple different mordanting techniques being recommended to you. The truth is, no one mordanting technique works best across all fibers and all dyes. They all kind of act different with each other. But in this video, I will show you how I tested six different mordanting techniques against each other all on cotton fiber across four different natural dyes. You will see how I used all of the different methods and what they are exactly and how you could do them yourself. And then we will go over the results and compare them and see which mordants perform the best with which natural dyes. And I will be doing a light fastness test to see which mordants actually help keep the color the same after being exposed to the sun. There are all kinds of different mordanting ingredients. There are the metal salts, and then there are tannins. In this experiment, I did not involve any tannin mordants. I'm also throwing in a wild card mordant, which is soy milk. I really want to see um, how it works compared to like alum and aluminum acetate. So let's get going! The first thing I'm going to do is mordant this piece of fabric with soy milk. This method takes way longer than all the other mordanting methods, so I just want to get it done before even starting with the others. In a large stainless pot, I'm mixing one part soy milk to four parts water. My fabric has been scoured and pre-wetted before this so that it absorbs the mordant evenly. I'm getting it nice and saturated with the soy milk and then I'm going to set this aside and leave it soaking like this for at least 12 hours. Occasionally I check on it and stir it around. The fabric has been soaking in the soy milk solution for over 12 hours now, more like 20 hours actually, but we are nowhere near done with this mordanting method. Now I need to dry this piece of fabric, so I'm going to stick it in my spin dryer and get it partially dry. Whoa there, spin dryer. And then I line dry the fabric the rest of the way, till it's nice and stiff with dry soy milk. And then we put the fabric in the soy milk solution again and get it wet and saturated again. But this time I'm not leaving the fabric in the solution to soak, I'm just wringing it out once it's nice and saturated and re-drying it again. It's recommended that you do these quick soakings several times and you let the fabric dry completely in between each soaking to build up the layers of the soy milk dried on the fibers, I guess. To be honest, I don't understand the science of what's happening here at all. But lots of natural dyers swear by the smortington method and it's nice that it doesn't use any ingredients that you really have to go out of your way to buy. You can just pick up some soy milk at a grocery store. The fabric now has four dried layers of soy milk on it and it's ready. Now let's talk about all the other mordantin methods that I will be testing. One piece of fabric is going to be the control and it's not getting mordanted with anything. Another piece of fabric is going to be mordanted with aluminum acetate and a chalk after bath, which is my go-to method for mordanting cotton fiber. This piece is going to be mordanted with alum, soda ash, and vinegar. And this method calls for the fibers to be heated to 194 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and a half. This piece is going to be mordanted with just alum and simmered for one hour. This one will be mordanted with alum and sodium acetate and then get a chalk after bath. This piece is going to be mordanted with aluminum lactate and also receive a chalk after bath. 
And lastly, we have this piece of fabric, which I already mordanted with soy milk. All right, so that's the plan, and let's get mordanting. First, I'm gonna do the control. It's not gonna be mordanted with anything. I'm just going to soak it in room temperature water while all the other pieces are getting mordanted. I also wanna mention, I'm going to use the same amount of water for all of these mordanting methods. Now onto aluminum acetate. I measured out 10% of the weight of the fibers that I'm mordanting in aluminum acetate and I'm dissolving it with hot water. Gotta make sure it dissolves completely before I add the fabric. I'm going to start out all of these mordanting methods using hot water that I heated to about 160 degrees in order to dissolve the mordants fully. I need to really make sure the labels stay with the jars or this whole experiment is gonna fall apart. Next up, we have the combination of alum and sodium acetate. I measured out 15% of the weight of fibers in both of these ingredients, and I'm dissolving them in the hot water together. These two ingredients combined are actually supposed to create aluminum acetate, so we'll see if we get the same results from this mordanting technique and aluminum acetate. Next up, we have aluminum lactate. This is an exciting new mordant that many people aren't aware of yet. And what's really cool about it is it's made from renewable materials. It's actually made through the fermentation of the byproducts of the sugar and starch industries. And supposedly it works as well as aluminum acetate on cellulose fibers. But we'll see about that. Next, we're going to address the two methods that require the mordantine solution with the fibers in it to be heated. The first method is just mordantine with 15% weight of fiber in a loom. A loom is actually kind of a general term that can refer to several different chemical compounds. I'm specifically using potassium aluminum sulfate here, but aluminum sulfate is also used by natural dyers as a mordant, and it is also referred to as a loom. And lastly, we have the most complicated of all these methods. Um, this one uses 20% weight of fiber in a loom, 10% of the weight of fiber in soda ash, and 1.5% of the weight of fiber in vinegar. And then the solution has to be heated at 194 degrees for an hour and a half with the fibers in the solution. Why would you choose to use such a complicated method over the others? Well, it doesn't use any expensive ingredients. Alum, soda ash, and vinegar are all very inexpensive and easy to buy. Now the two hot methods are going on the stove and I'm gonna try to heat them both up to around 194. Eventually I come to terms with that this was not enough water to use for these two methods, especially when it's boiling off for an hour and an hour and a half so I end up adding more water to both of them. Meanwhile, the methods that don't require heating are just chilling over here and I'm stirring them every once in a while. These fabrics have now soaked in their mordantine solutions for an hour and they are ready for their chalk after baths. I'm taking the fabric pieces out of the jars and filling the jars with clean water. The control isn't going to get a chalk after bath, it's just going to hang out in this empty jar. Now I'm gonna add 5% of the weight of fiber in chalk to each of these jars. When I say chalk, I actually mean calcium carbonate. I just don't wanna repeat that a hundred times in this video. The purpose of this is to fix the mordant to the fabrics. The two methods that require you heat the solution did not include a chalk after bath in their instructions, so they won't be getting one. The alum mordant method has been at temperature for an hour now, so I am taking it off the heat and letting it cool. 
and half an hour later the other method is ready to be taken off the heat too which is good because the water keeps boiling off that I keep adding and it's been quite a trial. All of the mortising is essentially done. Now I just need to rinse out the fabrics and the jars. It's important to rinse the fabrics after they've been mordanted, especially if you gave them a chalk after bath because the chalk will affect the color of the dye baths if it's still sitting on the fibers. Once everything has been rinsed, I'm going to start pre-wetting the soy milk mordanted fabric piece since I'm going to get right into dyeing right now. I need my metal pots back to prepare the dyes, so I'm going to switch these two fabrics to other containers I have. Since I want to test these mordants on several different dyes, I am going to divide these fabric pieces into quarters now. And I'm going to store the extra pieces in labeled plastic bags till I'm ready to use them. And here I just want to pause and say, I just made a mistake that's going to haunt me later, and I'll tell you all about it. But right now, let's see how it goes with our first dye, Matter Root. I strained the dye so there shouldn't be too many pieces of anything in it, and it should be nice, mixed, and even so it's distributed evenly in all the jars slash containers. Now each fabric is in its own little dye bath, and hopefully tomorrow we'll have some good results from these. So I devised a marking system so that I don't have to be afraid of separating the pieces of fabric from the labels, and I will be able to know which piece of fabric is mordanted with which mordant just by the markings. And here they are, all the matter root dyed pieces of fabric. They're very vibrant right now, but they're also wet, so they are going to get duller in color as they dry. I'm gonna let them dry and cure here, and meanwhile, I'm gonna get started on the next dye. The next dye is Osage Orange. It looks super bright and happy yellow now, but I've had a problem with getting Osage Orange to stay bright like this. The third dye I used is Avocado Skins. I wanted to use the skins because they supposedly give a more pink color than the Avocado Pits. The fourth dye that I'm using is Logwood. And the results from that dye were definitely the most different from each other. But before we do any real comparing, I'm going to let these pieces of fabric dry, cure, and then they will all get a finishing wash in the washing machine with Synthropole. Before looking at the results, I want to let you know how I tested if the colors that these mordants gave me last or not. So I took each of the pieces of fabric from each mordanting method and each dye, and I cut it in half, and I stuck the halves of them onto a big piece of cardboard, and I have been putting it outside when it's completely sunny out, and letting them all sit out in the sun to get sun exposure. So I'm gonna show you the swatches, how they first came out, and then also how they are after nine hours or so of direct sunlight exposure. And after I was done putting them out in the sun, I took all those swatches off of the cardboard piece and I sent them through the wash in my washing machine with regular detergent just to see what washing a garment would do to these colors as well. All right, so I have to explain this at some point. Um, during the video, I pointed out that I had made a mistake when I was putting all of the extra pieces of mordanted fabrics in plastic bags to use later. I should not have done that with the soy milk mordanted ones. There's little specks on it, and I'm pretty sure that's mold or mildew. The soy milk started fermenting and growing things. So pretty much the avocado dyed piece, the osage dyed piece, and the logwood dyed 
uh, piece of fabric that was treated with the soy milk, none of them came out good. And I think it's because of that. I think I ruined it. So the soy milk results are only really valid for the matter root. And this just means I'm gonna have to at some point do this whole soy milk thing again to see if it does in fact work for these other dyes. First set of results that I'm gonna look at is matter root. So here is the control. It looks pretty saturated actually, um, but it's kind of brown. It's not very bright red. And let's see, when we look at all these other ones, aluminum acetate does look probably like the most vibrant color. Um, but aluminum lactate looks pretty good. And it's even more of like a, it might even be richer. It's like a more lipsticky color than the aluminum acetate. Aluminum acetate is like more of a bright orange red. And this one's a little bit more like even tones of blue. So that's pretty cool. Let's see other highlights of this test. Um, and this doesn't look very good. I'm definitely not doing all that again to get this because it looks it's almost it's pretty much the same as the control the control is a little more brown and this is a little more red but it's not very good bloom looks pretty light like it looks a lot lighter than it is a nicer color than the control it's just not very saturated aluminum sodium acetate mm, kind of orange and definitely not anywhere near as rich as aluminum acetate, so it doesn't really work the same, I would say. So I milk, not bad. Um, it looks like a better red than the control. Let's see what they look like after sun exposure. So here's everything before and after sun exposure. Control. I mean, yeah, definitely got a lot more washed out. But let's see what did better than the control. Soy milk. It does have a bit more color to it than the control. Aluminum acetate. Yeah, it's definitely more vibrant still. Alum. Hmm. I mean, it's not as brown as the control, it's very light. So it's a cleaner color than if you didn't use any mordants, but it's not very rich, but it's kind of nice. A loom soda ash and vinegar. That's the, it, there's like no difference. It looks pretty much exactly the same as the control. All right, so at least for matter root, I'm never doing that again. A loom and sodium acetate. <laughs> not very good. It did not do good in the sun. It is much lighter. Look, it still got color on the other side that wasn't exposed to the sun. But on the side that was exposed, well, that's not much color left in there. And aluminum lactate. Alright, aluminum lactate did pretty well. Even after sun exposure. If we remove all of the swatches that are before light exposure and before the washing, let's see what colors are the best. I like that the aluminum lactate kind of stayed true to itself. You know, it started like this, and this is what it's like after the sun. That's not too bad. Like, it just got lighter, but the color didn't become more brown, the color didn't become more yellow. And it didn't fade that badly. Hmm. So yeah, I think uh, as far as matter root goes, I'm calling the winners aluminum lactate and aluminum acetate. Second round of results. This time Osage Orange. Control. Hmm. Very dull. Not very bright yellow. You know what else isn't very bright? the soy milk one. As I already talked about, I believe I ruined it. 
So I'm just going to take it out of these results because I don't think it's valid. Plus, like, it, this piece, it's exactly like the control. So obviously, it didn't work here. <laughs> so that is just going to get kind of tossed out. But okay, so let's look at the rest of these. They all look more vibrant than the control. The Alum Soda Ash and Vinegar combo. I mean, it's better than the control, but it's worse than all of the other ones. Most importantly, the Alum Soda Ash and Vinegar combo uh, did much worse than just Alum. Just a loom looks wonderful and bright, while this does not. So forget that method here. Let's see what it looks like after sun exposure. After the sun, um, none of them look bright. None of them look bright yellow. If we take out the before sunlight swatches and just look at the after sunlight results, Nothing here looks bright yellow. The only thing that looks bright yellow is the side of the fabric that did not get exposed to the sun. And that's even looking a bit duller than it was before. So honestly, if I had to pick a winner here, I wouldn't pick anything. Because none of them did a good job of keeping this fabric light fast. Well, I guess Osage Orange will be definitely one of those dyes that I'm going to experiment with combining tannins and metal salts to see if I can get the brightness of this yellow to stick around. So here's the avocado dye results. And they're all over the place. Aluminum lactate. It's more pink, actually. It's more pink than the control. And it's a bit richer, so... Alright, I'm gonna say aluminum lactate did okay. Soy milk, we're just gonna toss that away. Aluminum acetate did kind of alright. Um, okay, alum did not do so well. It's much paler than the control. Okay, you know what? I, I, I've been complaining about this method not doing anything for me, but... It, it does look pretty good here. It is pinker than the control, and it's kind of a nice color. Alum and sodium acetate. Hmm. It's very brown. It's very, like, matches this cardboard, like, cardstock. Well, let's see what happens after the sun. So these are the swatches of the avocado dyed pieces after sun exposure. And they did all kind of change color. Um. Well, actually, okay, I'll give um, sodium acetate and alum this. It, it didn't really change color. It actually stayed kind of the same, but it's the color of cardboard. It's not pink. So if you want this color, alum and sodium acetate will do it. This one became kind of a similar color, actually. Aluminum lactate, also didn't really stay pink. Okay, let's remove the other swatches. After sun, do any of these look pink? Uh, not really. None of these mordants seem to have prevented the avocado dye from losing its pinkness in the sun. A loom could actually like prevented the fabric from taking on color. If I had to pick a winner, Aluminum lactate didn't do so bad. So avocado dye is going to be another dye that I'm gonna have to experiment with combining tannins and other mordants because none of these mordanting methods were able to keep it pink. So lastly we have the results from logwood and it's the strangest results of them all because apparently without a mordant the color you get is like just completely different from everything else. I also have soy milk on the side here because it's also a funny color. Um, I, I mean, I definitely think it's too messed up to 
really test here. You can see like the little speckles of mold or whatever. But yeah, it also did not give any sort of a blue color. Aluminum lactate actually did not do well here. It gave a very dullish blue color and the alum soda ash vinegar um, also did not do well at all. The definite three winners here are aluminum acetate, aluminum sodium acetate, and alum. After sunlight exposure, the control went from brown to just kind of cardboardy, which is kind of seems like the default for every dye once it fades. This one got even duller. Aluminum lactate also dulled down. Sodium acetate actually stayed pretty bright. Aluminum acetate, that's not bad either. And alum. Yep, so these three mordants did pretty well. Alum and sodium acetate probably got me the darkest color. It looks very uneven, but I don't know if that's the mordant's fault or my fault because I dyed them in very confined small jars. Alum came out very even actually. And aluminum acetate, not bad either. The fading is not so dramatic with this color, really. They still stayed pretty dark and pretty rich in color. Yeah. If you want to see these test results as photos, go to my website blog and I will have an entry posted there same time as I post this video. So I do want to mention that my website now includes a natural dye and mordant shop. So you can go to my website and buy ingredients like aluminum acetate and aluminum lactate. And I'm offering all of the ingredients that I sell in several different sizes. So if you want to try something once and you don't want to have a lot of it left over, you can buy a small package of it that you will use up in just one dye batch. Well, as always, I hope this inspires you to do your own experiments and do your own tests and see what methods you like the best yourself. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel and see what else I come up with. Bye. And this one, ow, just stuck myself with a pin. What these little swatches are, are different pieces that I took off of the sun exposed piece after two and a half hours, two and a half hours more, and then three more hours. So total of uh, nine hours to get to this.